in this video, <coughs> uh, I'm going to do one question uh, on graphing hyperbola in conic section. So the question is, sketch this equation. Uh, you have to determine the center, the vertices, the asymptotes, and the coordinates of four sides of the hyperbola. So let me define a hyperbola. I try to draw two types of hyperbola that you can get. Now the, these two lines are called the asymptotes. And uh, when you have learned horizontal and vertical asymptote, now this is a new type of asymptote which is called oblique asymptote. So these two are asymptotes or asymptotes are a, is a line where the graph doesn't touch or doesn't meet. What does that mean? Now as say this is my y and this is my x. So as x approaches infinity the graph is approaching this asymptote. And as x approaches to negative infinity, the graph approaches this asymptote. So in other words, this graph starts from uh, almost infinity, uh, hits the vertex, this is the vertex, and then again goes to the other part of the asymp uh, asymptote. Now uh, these two are called the vertex or the vertices, the plural is vertex vertices and these two are called the focus of the foci and this is the definition of of any hyperbola in conic section which is if you if these two are the focus and uh, one more thing focus is always on this line which has the vertex now the line which has the vertex is called the transverse line and the focus also comes on the transverse line. You don't need to remember these things, but you need to know that. You don't need to remember the names, but you need to know the focus and the vertex always comes on the transverse line. In this case, the transverse line is your x-axis, and here the transverse line is your y-axis. Now, the definition is very important. The distance from P is any point on the hyperbola. P is equal to, this is any arbitrary point. And if you take the distance between P and F, that is P F1, and take away the distance of P F2, that will, will be a constant. So in this case, you can see P F1 is greater than P F2. So here in this case, if you take any point, that will be positive. But if it if it if that point comes if it, if that arbitrary point is on this branch, this would become negative. So we're not uh, whatever the number it is always constant. It can be positive or negative. In this case, yeah, as you see the transverse line is a y-axis. Okay, one more thing. This is called the center. Okay, in this case, the center of the hyperbola is zero zero here. Yeah. And also zero zero yeah. Okay, so what was I saying? This is if you take the distance that is p f one minus p f two. I have written constant, but you can understand that constant would be negative in this case. So these are the key features that you need to know. But uh, I'll show you how there is a formula. This is the general formula of a hyperbola. Now this formula is center in this case the center is zero zero the center is zero zero okay so a and b i'll explain the asymptote is this you don't need to remember this formula and the focus the formula of the focus is very important uh, focus has uh, the coordinate of c0 negative c0 and the formula is b squared is c squared minus a squared and uh, if you make C the subject, you can say C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Now, this is how I remember. In ellipse, sorry, in ellipse, if you remember, 
if you if you have seen my videos on, on ellipse see on let me write here in an ellipse c squared is the greater radius that is a squared if a is a greater radius a squared minus b squared if a is greater than b or it can be let me scroll down it can also be b squared minus a squared if b is greater than a okay so in an ellipse the focal length squared is equal to the greater the major radius minus the minor radius that's how i remember and the focal length in the case of hyperbola is a squared which is the denominator of x squared plus b squared okay so let us do this question now this is your this is the equation now the first thing that we need to find is the asymptote now asymptote is where the graph approaches sorry the x approaches infinity so let me let us make simplify this equation a little and make y the subject ultimately i want to make y this i want to write this in terms of y so what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, take away this from both sides that is x squared i want to isolate the y squared so i'm going to uh, take away x squared over 9 from both sides or if you have one if you can also understand that moving this to the other side so the next step i can write as y squared negative y squared over 4 is equal to 1 minus x squared over 9 so basically what i have done is i have moved this from the left to the right now i want to get rid of this negative one negative sign so i have to multiply this with negative one this with negative one and this with negative one so the next step would be y squared over 4 so this will become negative and this will become positive that is same as x squared over 9 minus 1 I want to get rid of this 4 so what should I do I should multiply this with 4 this with 4 and this with 4 so the y squared is equal to x squared sorry 4x squared over 9 minus 4 now I want to isolate the y, so I have to find the square root of this, but also find the square root of this. So I have to take the positive and the square negative square root of this side. So I hope you understand y is equal to plus or minus square root of this whole number. That is 4x squared over 9 minus 4. Now this is simple algebra now you have to put on your thinking cap so now i'm going to ask you what happens okay let me write what happens when x this arrow is to tell you x approaches positive infinity i want you to think what is happening to y? What happens means what is hap what would happen to y when x approaches infinity? Now, x is infinity and then you square it. Okay, so that's a huge number. When that happens, this doesn't play any role. This becomes insignificant. I'll say insignificant. Okay, it doesn't have any role because this is a mightily huge number so i can say y would be almost or i can say y right y in that case what will happen y would approach what number become plus or minus square root of 4x squared over 9 or this implies y is almost equal to plus or minus 2 over 3 x okay, now this is a very important step so what are we saying when x is approaching positive infinity 
y will approach y will almost be equal to plus or minus 2 over 3x now I hope you understand square root of 4 is 2 and square root of square root of 4 is 2 and square root of 9 is 3 and square root of x squared becomes x so our asymptotes the equation of the asymptotes asymptotes are y is equal to plus or minus 2 over 3 x okay so we'll first plot the asymptote okay so let's first plot the asymptote so okay now this has a center of 0 0 this is centered at 0 0 so I think uh, let us write that first so here the center of this uh, hyperbola is 0 0 so that's very important okay so let us plot 0 0 first so let us plot this with red so this is your center and the asymptote is 2 plus or minus 2 third uh, x so to draw the next point say to go 2 up and 3 across so this is one point for the positive asymptote and for negative 2 means you have to go 2 down and 3 across and then this is there will be one asymptote going like this and other so let me draw it so let me draw take a dotted line and I'm going to join the points okay so this is your one asymptote so let me highlight this a little and do a little justice to this mm -hmm. so I hope you can see that so this is one asymptote and uh, the other asymptote yeah I think that's fine and the other asymptote would be joining these two points so let me join it oh uh, yeah that's fine I think that's fine. This is the other asymptote. Okay, so this is the center, and these are the two asymptotes. I will continue this in the next video. Thank you very much.